Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are going to talk about HCD in Kubernetes. So like I've been telling you that HCD is actually like a brain of the Kubernetes system. So it actually stores the information about everything, whatever is happening in Kubernetes uh, system cluster, basically. So any pod you create, any node you add, any deployment you create, all that information is stored in your HCD cluster. So Kubernetes API, API server, which we discussed in the last video, actually stores all that information in your HCD cluster. So even when you do some kind of migration in Kubernetes, your HCD is the most important com component uh, present uh, in your uh, Kubernetes cluster, which actually requires the migration. So if you lose your HCD cluster, you actually lose data of your Kubernetes cluster. So what is uh, HCD? So HCD is basically a data store, uh, like any data store which we have. Uh, but it's unlike the traditional uh, databases, which are like in table and columns format, it's a key value store. So you store data in forms of keys and values, right? Uh, advantages of using HCD is that they have consistent reads and writes. So I mean, instead of I mean, any data which you write is immediately available for re reading in HCD. They're highly available. So whenever you deploy a, a a Kubernetes, a production ready Kubernetes uh, cluster, you would normally see that HCD is actually an external component. So it's not deployed along with the Kubernetes cluster. It's an external comp component because it's a cluster of its own. And there are like multiple nodes. Just, so it can be a three node cluster, five node cluster, and they basically maintain a leadership among them using the raft protocol. So that's the protocol, I mean, used by a lot of uh, systems nowadays to maintain the leadership among them. And this is actually what gives uh, uh, HCD high availability because the data is replicated in all the nodes. So any data which you write uh, on the HCD node, it's replicated along all its, say, suppose this is a master node or the leader node. So the follower nodes also get the same data. So the data is replicated. So in case one of, if your master nodes goes down, one of these nodes actually become the leader node and your data stays there. So that is why it's also replicated form of data and it's highly available. It is secure, uh, secure as in sense, because uh, in order to communicate with the uh, HCD, you actually require, I mean, you can set up uh, uh, X509 certificates. So without those certificates, you cannot communicate. So we'll see that when we'll go on to our terminal and see how we actually communicate with our HCD cluster using the X509 certificate. So that is that makes it actually secure. Let me get rid of this. So, so if you are deploying your, uh, say, Kubernetes cluster from scratch, you would actually want to uh, isolate your HCD cluster, maybe create a separate cluster of its own and then advertise the address to the Kubernetes cluster. But when you are deploying your uh, Kubernetes cluster using kubeadm, kubeadm actually deploys them as pods. So we'll see that uh, when we'll go to our terminal. So you'll see that there are pods which are deployed and how we are going to interact with these pods. Let's see, let's actually move to our terminal and see how you actually put value in an HCD cluster get value from an HCD node, uh, HCD cluster basically, or HCD database as you can say. And, and let's see what all values are available to you in a Kubernetes cluster, right? So let's go on to our terminal and see that. All right, so now I'm on my terminal and I have my mini cube set up running. So let's just verify that, run some command, kubectl get nodes. And you can see that we have our mini cube uh, cluster running. So Let's see the pods which are there in the cube system namespace. So I told you all these pods which are deployed by kubeadm, the components of Kubernetes cluster are deployed in cube system namespace. So let's check that. So kubectl get pods and hyphen n in the cube system namespace. So you can see that Minikube has actually deployed a pod called HCD Minikube, which is our, which is acting as our HCD node. So it's just a single pod. And in order to see what all configuration goes inside that, so let's just do a describe on this. Describe pod, 
copy this and so let's just go up and you can see that this is the complete configuration which goes in when you are uh, running uh, HCD as a pod. So, I mean, if you would be running this as a service or an, as an external binary or a different cluster, you would probably be running as a service, HCD service, which runs on port 2379. So you can see that it is running on port 2379 and you would be running uh, it as a system D uh, service and all that information or all this information would go into the system D uh, service file. All right, so now let's see how we can interact with this particular uh, HCD cluster or HCD node, which is deployed by Minikube from a local system. So the command to do that is basically is kubectl exec. So kubectl exec we use when we want to run any command on the pod, which is running on our uh, Kubernetes system, right? Kubernetes cluster. So if you want to run any command on a pod in the Kubernetes cluster, you use kubectl exec. So that is what we are going to do. So we are going to run kubectl exec. Uh, the pod name, let's just copy the pod name. It was etcd minikube. All right. So and what we need to look run inside that is sh hyphen c and for now i mean i think you should just see what i'm running i'm going to define the api version so etcdctl underscore api equals three so api version three which i'm going to use then i'm going to use the etc etc etcdctl sorry etcdctl which is actually a cli based utility which you can use to interact with your etcd cluster so etc tctl and then I need to actually pass some information to it so, and which actually I'm going to go and get from here. So you can see that the adv advertised client URL. So I need this. So I'll copy this, come back down and hyphen hyphen and points after endpoints. I'll paste this. Then we have CA cert hyphen hyphen key hyphen hyphen cert. So all this information we need. So let's just copy these information. So first we need CA cert, which should be somewhere in this. So you can see trusted CA file. Let's copy this location. And this file will not be there on your local system. These files are there on the virtual machine, which Minikube has launched, right? So just FYI. All right, so we have got the CSR. Let's go and get the key. Key should also be here. Let's look at the file. You can see key file. Let's get this. Come over here. Put it. And now let's go and get the cert. Let's get the cert file. Put it here. And now we can run any command. So in order to get uh, all the keys uh, from the existing Kubernetes, uh, uh, sorry, existing etcd, etc. It's very confusing existing etcd cluster let's just do get and i think this command should get us all the key hyphen hyphen pre fix hyphen hyphen keys hyphen only all right so if we haven't made any mistake this should actually give us all the keys uh error from server pods not found Okay, so yes, I know why it didn't find the pod because we haven't specified the namespace, right? So you can see hyphen n cube system and endpoint we got a flag, so it's not endpoint, rather endpoint. So you should be aware of all these small silly mistakes. So let's just fix this. So it is endpoints and not in points. Now let's run it. And you can see 
So the root directory in our existing etcdl etcd node is registry and under this registry you can see you have all the information about so service accounts are there if you scroll up you will have minions namespaces so you can see namespaces you have cube system pods whatever all the pods are running you have information about that right so you can see all this information now what if i want to put some information inside this so we'll run the same command let's just get rid of this and instead of get we'll do a put we'll do a key so suppose i say that my key is name and then we'll do a value so say tarik and let's put it so you can say see that it has shown okay what if you want to get it again getting is very simple we just need to replace put by get and you need to provide the key name which was name so you can see that it outputted the name and i mean the key and the value both so name was the key and value was tarik all right so i hope you got what exactly is etcd now i mean we probably will not see uh, by i mean we'll not run a distributed etcd cluster in this course because we'll be doing everything on minikube but i can probably create a separate video for actually running etcd as a distributed node in a three node cluster so just let me know if you want me to do that in the comments so i'll probably create a video for that it's very simple running uh, etcd in a distributed environment there's just a little bit of changes that goes into its configuration file so we'll probably see that if if you guys are interested right so i think this is it for this video guys uh, please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and yeah thank you for watching